That's all. Yep, that's all. <laughs> All right, so you guys are going to love our next guest because he is a senior writer at Giga Ohm, and he is a man who loves both Muay Thai and heavy metal music, presumably at the same time. <laughs> it depends. Please put your hands together for Derek Harris. All right. All right, so I'm, I've been excited for this interview because we're going to go a little bit into the future. We're going to talk about AI to start with. So one of the last posts that you put on GigaOM was about uh, Google's acquisition of some new artificial intelligence companies. And we talked about how the audience is mostly entrepreneurs. They're either tech entrepreneurs or small business, but they're always looking to kind of see where the future is going to be and what they can do to maybe collide with it. So um, we'll talk about that in, in less detail in a minute, but let's start with this AI acquisition and what you think about the future of artificial intelligence. Yeah, so I think, I mean, you know, the, the, the poster, one of the, the big, the, the, the big, the lead, I guess, was, you know, artificial intelligence isn't probably what we want to think it is, right? It's not, you know, it's not robots, it's not to use a cliche, Skynet or Hell or whomever, right? I mean, what it is today is largely, you know, advances in computer vision, advances in natural language processing, text analysis, and... You know, so you're starting to see it pop up in things like Google Now and Google Plus and, you know, recognizing the images in your photos that you haven't tagged, right? Or, you know, Pinterest and Dropbox are buying computer vision companies. You can imagine the, the you know, Pinterest being able to tell advertisers actually, hey, listen, this is what people are actually pinning, right? That right. Not. So that, that, that's not connected. They're not pinning directly from Nordstrom or something, right? So that's kind of the state of it right now, which is, you know, advances in recognizing and understanding the images and photos as well as you know the words and how the, what the words actually mean in text so translation applications um, you know smart search voice control all those types of things right so basically what we're talking about is when you upload a picture to pinterest right now it's sort of missing data it knows your tags but it can't actually see the photo of the pbr or whatever it is right <laughs> yeah, exactly. and actually let them know but you're saying that's kind of the bulk of where ai is right now and like the next Thing you see it kind of conquering? Yeah, I mean, that's where the, a lot of the big investment is right now. So, a lot, so, so the Google bought this company called DeepMind. There are Facebook just hired a guy named Jan LeCun. He was one of the godfathers of AI, Google. <laughs> I mean, they've all hired these professors and researchers who are now multimillionaires, right? Because, right. And um, I mean, they, Google paid 400 million for DeepMind, right? So, you can like, mm. you know, just for the people. How, <laughs> so, big, how many people is it? Like 50. Oh. <laughs> So, I mean, it's, it's it's a lucrative place, but yeah, the there's your reason enough, yeah, <laughs> into it, exactly. But but yeah, I mean, the, the the work they're doing is you know kind of in neural neural networks are kind of the, the a lot the bulk of it, right? Are trying to have systems that can you know think or act kind of like a human brain, not exactly, but you know. So yeah, that's where that's where it is right now. I mean, that's the you know the the, the applications right now are on the web, they're on our images, they're on whatever. But looking forward, I mean, yeah, you can totally see. It. I mean, you could. You could start to analyze cancer images of cancer cells, right? Because I just got an email today for a company called Books. I don't know if it's Booksci or Books AI, but yeah. whatever. The the application is it, it, it scans books and reads. You know, it claims to just read the language, and so it recommends books based on what the books are actually about, and it's not what the author said it was about, or it's not what the tags are. Oh, I got gotcha. it, it understands how the words are connected to one another. It understands how these things are done across you. You know, a large data, da data set. Well, that's just, so, so that's kind of similar to what Watson was doing, right? When it was reading uh, natural language? S similar, or? similar, yeah. yeah. Um, Watson is definitely an AI. It's, they call it cognitive computing. There, there are s slight differences, but but yeah, that's large. Yeah. That's, that's a big part of it, yeah. Okay, and, well, and so in our pre-interview, we talked a little bit about Watson, but go ahead, tell me about uh, what you understand about Watson and what you think that means for the future. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, Watson, if, you had no one's, if anyone's unfamiliar, was kind of the, the IBM system that that beat the Ken Jennings and the IBM champions on Jeopardy pretty handily, actually. And since then, IBM has been trying to commercialize it, right? And what it does is it's a combination of all sorts of technologies from AI, machine learning, NLP, you know, Hadoop, like everything. If there's a thing that falls into the big data umbrella, right? Watson uses it to some degree, but it's the the goal of it is to take data and just feed it into the system. Which starts to draw connections among among the various pieces, which starts to understand, you know, how things are related. So, med medicine and healthcare is a big area, and actually, I think those are IBM's some of its biggest and only commercial users. Yeah, I are. think healthcare is what the <laughs> next challenge right, they're going but, for. Yeah. And they're trying to figure out. So, like, some they're using it for cancer research, for example. And I saw an example the other day on some big press conference, and they were showing out 
you know, Watson, they answered even this, this patient's symptoms or complaints to Watson, and Watson said, oh, no, you know, there's actually, there's a new paper out like <laughs> yesterday where there's a 1% chance that... Yeah. I mean, it's just these small things because no doctor could read. Right. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Every medical journal that's ever been yeah, out. Yeah, and that's why yeah. like, Google's so great because Google has all our searches and images and map data and YouTube. And like every, so every source of image and text and how we use language and record things, like the bigger the data set, right? Like with Watson, yeah. the more it can learn. Well, yeah, I mean, I love the thought of being able to maybe pull up a website in the future and typing in my symptoms and it at least suggesting the top 10 things it probably yeah, like is to give to a doctor. Which yeah. is like, you have cancer. Like a re- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably, yeah, because on, on Jeopardy sometimes it would be like completely off. You yeah, know, like it's, it's equal not- MC squared was created by Paris and you'd be like, oh, Jesus, really? <laughs> yeah, there's still, there's like, some yeah, work to like, do, but that was, yeah, that was like, I mean, that was all, what, three years ago now, so time. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's probably, good. probably advanced significantly. Okay, so let's talk about uh, ways that entrepreneurs can tap into it because they don't all have two hundred million dollar budgets. But they I guess there's some APIs. Do it, if you could explain what an API is and what's available for entrepreneurs that are just getting into the tech world. Yeah, so I think so. I think the most interesting thing about the whole AI movement right now is that it's it's still big and very complicated, and you know you, you, it's largely PhDs. These guys are doing it. However, what you're starting to see is there are companies starting to turn some of this out, including IBM with Watson as APIs, right? So if you're a developer and you can code, you know, in theory, you can, you can access some of these capabilities, you know, right, build them right into your app with, you know, just a few, a few lines, right? So there's a company that I cover, um, it's called Alchemy API, it's based out of Denver, and it does, uh, it does natural language processing and text analysis as a service. So you just okay. kind of connect to your data via API, right? And it'll go in and do content extraction, um, topic analysis, sentiment analysis, all these things. They demoed, I don't know if they're rolling out, if they rolled out yet, image recognition. I test, tested the sample, it was <laughs> hit or miss. But there, I mean, there, oh, yeah. sometimes it would be like, that's an Angora rabbit. Yeah. And it would be like 60, <laughs> not just a rabbit, like it knew the, like the type the breed. Yeah, so was, I, I would, yeah. it's impressive at times, Named right? Henry um, and, you know. And so I was just thinking actually with like the, the, the fridge app. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, you so I mean, rather than entering into your food, right? I mean, I mean, if you could actually, when you have a smart refrigerator, I mean, if you oh, recognize yeah. what's in your, what's in Fridge, your right. refrigerator like that automates the process just yeah put a little gopro on the inside of the door and then just exactly. snap the photo and then it that's can the internet of, the that's food. the internet of things oh, yeah, right okay. the whole vision so but yeah so i mean yeah because i always imagine you'd have to put like these little qr codes on everything but you're right like yeah if it's smart enough to actually pull that data out yeah and that's some i mean so. i think that's a even a low-hanging application but definitely yeah. something that we're kind of, but yeah, so IBM, uh, Alchemy API is doing that. Uh, IBM is working on it. It's IBM, so I've heard that it's not the easiest uh, service to access. But they're trying to make it op- open it up to developers. Um, you know, I think Google already does it to some degree. Google has something called the Prediction API, which is more standard machine learning and kind of numbers based. But it, that's available for free or very low charge, I think. Um, and then, but and then, but if you're a developer on these platforms too, uh, Microsoft is big into deep learning and AI and. You know, so if you're working on the X, writing an Xbox app or, God forbid, a Windows Phone app, um, <laughs> speech recognition. I mean, they the, the, all the speech recognition capabilities, all the translation, the translation services, all that is you can tap is, into is it based and... on this. And Google, I mean, if you're building an Android app, like, that's all. You know, there's a lot of things. Speech, again, um, search completion, text, text completion, like, you know, predicting what the sentence is probably going to be more accurately. All those types of things are oh, gotcha. coming along. So, you know, and I think they'll all be... Most of the stuff has to be delivered via API pretty soon. So if there's one thing we've seen since, I can all like since like I, I look at my, the world like pre Amazon Web Services and cloud computing and post Amazon and cloud computing and post was I mean pre it was just kind of like you build a web app whatever you, you had a database and some computers and some storage and now it's like you're getting services from everywhere you're getting capabilities from everywhere and so many innovative apps have been built because of you know, this cloud delivery of things because of the easy access. If you're doing AI, for example, and you want a big audience and you want to take this to places it couldn't be, like the crowd, the, you know, the infinite world of developers is definitely more powerful, I think, than right. probably is what you're thinking about. Different so. ways. Okay, so besides the APIs for uh, artificial intelligence, if you were going to jump into the tech game right now, what other <laughs> industries look like they might be kind of right for entrepreneurs to get into? What other things right. excite you? I guess, like, what other things kind of excite you that you cover that you think, well, that's, that could be a game changer? So some of the coolest, like, when I cover startups, some of the coolest things I, I am seeing are applying data, because data is like my... <laughs> like my life force, and, right? And at yeah. least professionally, and um, it's it's applying it to spaces that you haven't that haven't had that sort of application. That haven't had you know used data as anything 
a value before, oh, right? So, I mean, content media is definitely a big one because I will even at Giga, I'm like, we take stuff when we publish it. If the authors take it, great. If not, like, what do you know? I mean, you don't really oh, know yeah, what, yeah. you don't know what six years or seven years of content, what the themes are, what the, I mean, there's, there's a lot of content just floating out there. That's why Yahoo is buying up some companies and everything, right? That's Tumblr and Flickr and all these things. But alternatively, I mean, I covered a company recently and it was trying to rethink, um, this is one of the coolest ideas I've seen in <laughs> song, trying to oh, yeah. rethink like global indicators or economic indicators globally in emerging markets. And so what it does is it has a group of people, volunteers, oh, yeah. not really volunteers that pay someone like free cell data plans for their cell phones, but they're, they're in like India, China, like all over the developing world. They tell them what to take pictures of because there's certain things they figure are indicative of, you know, the thing. So they'll go to like a grocery store and take a picture of the price of milk on the shelf or something. Oh, right across interesting. The and then so yeah. this just gets fed back to the servers machine learning algorithms kind of extract the image, they extract the price, they extract the location, all this stuff. And all of a sudden here you have in real time or close to real time, you know, an indicator of the actual prices and the, the, the fluctuations across markets that normally it's taking, you know, months or a quarter or whatever, however long, long it takes for the global GDP report to come out or whatever, right? Right, and how many startups could build apps on top of that data? If there was an API for that kind of stuff, but then would, you could do all sorts of yeah, things. Yeah, and the thing is it, it, it wasn't yeah. like that I mean, so yeah. some of the tech is complicated, but the idea is just kind of like you, there's people with pictures is <laughs> so how it is right. in the field, right? So, I mean, I think anything where, you know, you're looking at, you've seen data kind of infiltrate everything, like from clothing, right? Every true and company, I think is a Vegas tech company. I mean, yeah. it's like, how do you, how does your profit? Well, here, we're going to run some algorithms that, that figure that out. So I think, I mean, anything, it's, it's, it's really honestly conceivable that anything, if you have any sort of content at this point, is data right if you have the right technology so right okay well so the, you guys can uh, learn more about the technologies as entrepreneurs you could look by following him on twitter at derek harris there's also derek at gigaohm.com if you want to I guess. Well, email me pitches email yeah me if you have ideas <laughs> <But yeah, it's, laughs> that was okay, only yeah, half sarcastic but... i'm always interested to hear what's going on cool all right well thank you for coming out we want to you guys want to take him out with the cheers <laughs> Through ups and downs, we gather round and sing a dance song. Let's go to the world, we love the world, we sing a